Welcome to this week's virtual Shabbat with Ashmir. I'm here with Meredith Berkman, Shabbat mom, in the virtual Barney Greengrass. Looking forward, Meredith, to returning to Barney Greengrass and to our bagels and locks very, very soon. So you mean there would be bagels behind you, not books, or the books are meant to represent the bagels? And Okay. Um, we'll have Sorry. to bring them in next time. Exactly. Um, this week's portion is the portion of Korah. And it's really a portion about leadership and the threat to leadership because someone tries to begin a coup. Someone tries to rebe- begin a rebellion. And, you know, there really are two ways to look at this story. They, you can look at it through the vantage point of Korah of the rebel, of the troublemaker, of the one who, um, who feels that Moses is somehow being immoral in his leadership. And you can look at it as Moses, who it seems at, by this point in the Torah, Moses just continually gets beat up. You know, the people complain that they, they need water. And then they complain again, they need water. And then they want food. And then they go into the land of Israel and they're not satisfied with the land of Israel. They're always complaining. And now finally, Korak says, enough is enough. You shouldn't be the leader. I'm the leader. Now, leadership is something that we're very familiar with. And, you know, judging leaders and deciding whether the leaders that we have are the kind of leaders that we want and how leaders lead in times of crisis is a real issue that we're, you know, that we we confront all the time. The question really is, what do you think, what do you think of Moses? How do you think Moses felt when he was challenged by Korah? And how do you think Moses should have reacted? I mean, basically, it was easy for him, Meredith, because God got involved. And therefore, a miracle happened, and the earth opened up, and Korach went down, and that was the end of it. But when you think about it, what was Moses' reaction, and what should Moses' Moses's reaction should have been? Well, first of all, I, I think I've mentioned to you that I always find this somewhat troubling because... Um, of the, the manner in which Korach and his wives and his children and all of his people, including the children, are destroyed. As you said, that was the miracle. And so I guess certainly um, with a modern lens, though it was the, the, you know, within the context of the, of, the, of the Torah, this was the will of God that these people would be eradicated from their myths. But I, I always have found that um, somewhat troubling. Um, you know, I, as we're talking, I'm just sort of, wondering in some ways this is almost like a metaphor that um moses is in some ways could be a stand-in for god here right because you know how does god feel right the people are always complaining the people it's never enough it's never enough and um, you know, i'm wondering just like looking at it with a literary lens in some ways is this meant to give um moses um who seems so tired sometimes and seems so exhausted sometimes, if this is to give him a sense um, of like, you think you're tired, how do you think I feel? And, you know, look how the people, um, I mean, come up um, against this. I guess I, what I would ask you is, um, do you think Moses reacted strong enough as a leader? Should Moses have been able to solve this with might should the right of Moses been able to magically quell this, um, this uprising? You know, what does it say about Moses as a leader that in the end he must always rely on God? Can't so he I, control I think, his own flock? So I think, Meredith, that that's really the big question here. And that is, it all works out for Moses. God performs a miracle, they die, and we, you know, so to speak, they live happily ever after. But actually, Moses is position as leader is not strengthened by this. I think his position as leader is actually weakened by this because there was a rebellion and he was forced to rely on God. That's not really strength. So I think your point is right. And I think that's kind of an under, um, you know, kind of underemphasized point in this week's portion. And that's the fact that it might be that ultimately the biggest loser here is Moses. Because when you attack leadership, but we know this today about leaders, you know, when a leader is criticized, 
it's really important the way the leader responds to the criticism. And we all know leaders who respond well to criticism, and we all know leaders who respond poorly to criticism. And the leader who responds well to criticism, his leadership is strengthened because of the criticism. And the leader who responds poorly to criticism, so he's even weaker, he's weak because he's criticized, and he's weak before he because he responds poorly to criticism. So I think this, you know, the, the story as it relates specifically to Moses really resonates with us today. Once again, like I always say to my kids, it's the magic book. It always, there's always something either I've never noticed before as many times as I've read this book over and over and over week after week for so many years of my life. And there's always something that is eerily relevant, like to what we are experiencing in this moment, no matter what it is, and even more so now. Very well said about leadership. Good, and that's beautiful about the magic book. Um, and look forward to continuing our conversation next week about this wonderful book. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.